Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, this is a great day of rejoicing. First and foremost, we celebrate the great feast of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. But during our celebration this evening, we are also very pleased to welcome Eric Eschweiler into full communion of the Catholic Church. He will then be confirmed and receive his first communion. But as well as him, Karol Pryszkotsky will also receive our Lord in Holy Communion for the very first time. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have done.
Almighty, ever-living God, who assumed the Immaculate Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, body and soul, into heavenly glory, grant, we pray, that always attentive to the things that are above, we may be mer merits to be sharers of her glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was opened, and the Ark of the Covenant was seen within his temple. A great portent appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pangs in the agony of giving birth. Then another portent appeared in heaven, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on its heads. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman who was about to bear a child so that it might devour her child as soon as it was born. And she gave birth to a son, a male child, who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. But her child was snatched away and taken to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God so that there she can be nourished for 1,260 days. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven proclaiming, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. Or since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ, but each in his own order. Christ, the first fruits. Then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For Christ must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. The word of the Lord. set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women! and blessed is the fruit of your womb. 
And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with Elizabeth about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Fifty years ago now, almost to the day, when I attended a course at my Anglican seminary that considered the doctrine pertaining to the Blessed Virgin Mary, I was told in no uncertain terms, and I quote, that the Immaculate Conception and the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary constitute precisely that, a conception and an assumption. I'm afraid that today the vast majority of Protestants, and far too many Catholics for that matter, continue to believe precisely that. Oh, they have no problem with the notion that Mary was assumed into heaven until you mention the body, that Mary was assumed into heaven, body and soul. This is where the trouble always begins. And the problem is always the body. The increasing number of people who have no real religion but claim to be spiritual people, they are also perfectly open to the idea that some purely spiritual residue survives after death. And they don't mind talk of souls flying up to heaven or to somewhere, but they rebel against any notion of the body somehow being included in existence after death. Of course, part of the objection lies on the purely obvious and biological level, because it's obvious that in death, the body grows cold, it decomposes. It seems to be the final end for that part of us, the physical part that we call the body. But the objection goes deeper, because to admit that the body participates in any way in the state of eternal life after death is to admit that the body in this life and what I might choose to do to it or choose to do with it, that this is ultimately important. It is to admit that the body is much more than merely an appearance. And in the end, 
is surely as vital a part of the person I am as that spiritual part that I call my soul. The body is always the problem. It was the problem for the Greeks in the early church who were open to hear about eternal life, but they walked away the minute that St. Paul began to speak of the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it is the main problem today with those folks who want to spiritualize and moralize away Christianity and deny any lasting value of the human body, with the result that they claim that they can do whatever they want to do with either their own body or with someone else's body, even that of a child in the womb. And they claim that this has no ultimate significance because it is merely physical, that it is merely a body with no ultimate and lasting relationship to the spiritual. This is why so many funerals today avoid any idea of mourning by concentrating solely on a celebration of life that sometimes endeavors to ignore the death of the body altogether. Nowadays, the belief is that absolutely everyone instantly goes to some sort of heaven where the hope of purgatory has gone the same way as the fear of hell. And priests wear white vestments on both All Saints Day and on All Souls Day, which can appear at least to ignore the reality and the finality of physical death, all of which can also lessen the beautiful and the necessary virtue of Christian hope, that virtue which lies beyond the darkness, beyond the sorrow and the grief. Whatever we may want to believe, because it makes our lives easier, everyone knows that the body is absolutely an integral and necessary part of the person that I am because my body is how I live in the world. My body is not merely a shell for the soul. It is involved in the most intimate way with my soul. And what I do with my body always affects my soul, and what I do with my soul affects my body. Therefore, there can be no talk of redemption and salvation. There can be no talk of eternal life unless the body is included. Because this is a part of the person I am. You see, salvation means being saved, both body and soul, as the whole man or as the whole woman. And ultimately, this Feast of the Assumption of Blessed Mary is a feast of her redemption and what that means. She who was conceived without original sin by the merits of her son's death on the cross is the very same Mary who is now Queen of Heaven, not some disembodied soul but Mary, the complete woman, the woman who is clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and on her head a crown of 12 stars. And while it is true that hers is a singular privilege, for there is no other human being in the history of the world who plays the role that she does in salvation history, as the new Eve, as the Theotokos, the bearer of God, as the mother of the Savior. Her realized destiny is what now gives us great hope. Because what is a fact for Mary 
that is, her being in heaven, body and soul, as a total person, is what constitutes our best hope for ourselves. For it is our own resurrection to which we look forward. It is the fruit of our own redemption in Jesus Christ, who died on the cross in a real body, who rose again on the third day, not as a ghost, but as a complete man. It is Jesus Christ, whose body was gloriously transformed into a body destined to live forever in the glory of God, who now gives us that same hope. My friends, what Holy Mary is today in heaven, in eternity, is also what constitutes the sure and certain hope that we have for ourselves, a sure hope founded on faith in Jesus Christ and actively lived out in the world where our life is centered on doing the will of God, a God whose will it is that all shall live. And so we celebrate this feast with great joy, for Blessed Mary is assumed into heaven body and soul, making the hope we hold for ourselves something very real indeed.
his loving kindness for the many years, so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of his family. The response to the petitions is, and let our cry come unto you. And let our cry come unto you. We pray that the truth of Christ's gospel will transform every earthly sovereignty, authority, and power, and usher in the kingdom of God. O Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come unto you. We pray that all people will grow in their reverence for the dignity of human life from conception to natural death. O Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come unto you. We pray that all who have left the faith may through the intercession of the Queen of Heaven receive the grace they need to be drawn back to the sacraments. O Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry we pray that the assumption of the Blessed Virgin into heaven will fill all Christians with an ardent desire for sanctity here on earth 
and eternal life in heaven hereafter. O Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come unto you. We pray that Almighty God will bring about an end to the coronavirus pandemic and that he will abundantly bless those who are caring for the sick, the suffering, and the vulnerable at this time. O Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come unto you. We pray that our Blessed Mother will comfort those who are sick and suffering and draw them near to the heart of her Divine Son. O Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come unto you. We pray that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the souls of the faithful departed will find eternal joy in the company of the saints in heaven. O Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come unto you. We ask our Blessed Mother, who has assumed body and soul into heaven, to pray with us and pray for us as we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb.
sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, our tribute of homage, rise up to you, O Lord. And through the intercession of the most blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, may our hearts, aflame with the fire of love, constantly long for you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Douglas, our Bishop, Wayne, his auxiliary, Matthew, here present, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. 
in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. As we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gift that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be, 
may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with light, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And your spirit. Let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my presence, but only you say the words, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is number 6.4 in the red celebrate and song hymnal, Let Us Be Bread, 6.4.
Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we ask you to grant, O Lord, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Solemnity of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary is one of the feast days on which a plenary indulgence is granted under the usual conditions for a visit here to the Basilica as the diocesan shrine to Our Lady. The conditions, of course, are confession within seven days before or after, reception of the Eucharist, detachment from sin, and prayer for the Holy Father. We'll fulfill the last of those conditions right now as we pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, we pray. May the Lord preserve him, give him life, make him blessed upon the earth, and deliver him not up to the will of his enemies. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the passing. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, willed in his greatness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessing. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. May you who have devoutly gathered here on this day carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain among you always. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn is number 610. Hail Holy Queen, enthroned above, 610. 